Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. We have come out of the first weekend of the new standard and paper. Obviously, you are going to see some price impacts on a lot of cards we're going to look at today, but that's not all that's going on in the market. There's some exciting things going on in Modern, which we'll look at, and also a lot of Commander cards are heating up again. Quickly, before we get started, though, just a fast reminder, if you're looking to pick up Throne of Eldraine products, singles, sealed products, Check out FlipSideGaming.com. You can use that Heroes promo code to save yourself a little money, but that also supports the channel, which is always appreciated. With that out of the way, though, let's get into it. We're going to begin, as we always do, with Standard in the top five standard legal cards that have lost value this week. Now, just a quick note about this section. We're not going to talk about Throne of Eldraine cards in this video today. We did a companion video on those on Thursday, so check that out if you missed it. I'll link it at the end, but today we're going to focus on cards outside of that set. Number five is Omnith Locus of the Royal, down $1.20 to $9.50. So this card continues to go down. It's still a great commander card. Sees a tad bit of modern play. There's a modern five-color elemental deck that will usually run like one of these in the main. But it is going down because it's not seeing the same amount of play it was seeing last season in standard. So I do think this will come down a little bit more before it stabilizes. Number four, a Leyline of the Void from Corset 2020, down $1.24 to $9.99. Now, this is still a great sideboard card for modern, legacy, and even vintage. And who knows, maybe in the future it could have more implications for Standard, depending on where that meta goes. However, with the banning of Faithless Looting and Hogak and Modern, this card is not quite as critical as it was just a couple months ago. Because of that, it continues to go down. And also remember, this is a rare from Corset 2020. A lot of packs have been open. A lot of these are in circulation right now. It will probably come down a little more before stabilizing. Number three is Finale, a promise down $1.32 to $5.99. So this is softening up right now. Because this card a lot of times was being played with Arclight Phoenix, both in Standard and Modern. In Standard, the meta has moved away from Arclight Phoenix for the most part. And when it comes to Modern, of course, that Faithless Looting ban really hurt that deck. So this card is softening up as a result of all that. But this does still see Modern play in those As Foretold Electro Dominance decks. We'll have to kind of see how they do long term. But at least for right now, I do think this card will remain soft. Number two, the aforementioned Arclight Phoenix goes down $1.77 to $10. I've already kind of talked about this card with the previous one, so I won't rehash all of that, but not seeing as much play as it was seeing by far. And this card is getting relatively cheap really quickly. One thing to remember, too, there are extra copies of this that are out there in the marketplace because the Arcane Tempo Challenger deck included a copy. So there are more of these out there than your average Mythic Rare from Guilds of Ravnica. Number one is Knight of the Ebon Legion, down $1.93 to 801 Okay, so this is a card that has been going up pretty aggressively, so maybe you're thinking this could be some normalization, but there's a little more to it than just that. This is a card that looked great in the previous meta, and at the beginning of this meta, as people were preparing to go into week one, felt like it could be a good card, but unfortunately, where the meta is right now, kind of is against the decks that want to run this, and those are mostly aggressive builds. And Knight's builds. They haven't really taken off either. So when you look at some of the decks that were promising last week, Rakdos Aggro, Mono Black Aggro, Golgari Midrange, which sometimes included kind of a Knight's element, they just didn't perform well week one. And things could change. We're going to talk more about that in a few minutes. But at least right now, this card softens up. It does show up in one deck that performed pretty well last weekend, Golgari Adventures. So it will have a home. It's not going to lose all its value. But this is one that could lose a little more value in the next week or two. Okay, let's move on to the top five standard legal cards that have gained value this week. Number five is Agent of Treachery, up 96 cents to 221. Okay, so here's a card, and there's going to be a number of other ones on this list today, that is in that Bantlands deck. Also, there is a variation on that deck, Saltai Lands, it will show up there too. One thing to point out, though, about that Bantlands deck, it looked amazing last weekend. As a matter of fact, a little too amazing, it got people thinking that there could be an emergency banning. Perhaps Field of the Dead, perhaps Golos Tireless Pilgrim. But that theory was fueled by the fact that Wizards of the Coast then went ahead after the weekend and moved up their banned and restricted list announcement so it's going to happen now a week from Monday instead of the first portion of November. That's a pretty big jump forward, leading people to believe that maybe they want to change the standard format before the Paper Mythic Championship that occurs a few weeks down the road. And that would also give players a little time to kind of get their act together with perhaps a new meta kicking off. So with that being said, this card could potentially take a little bit of a hit from that, but it does see play in other important decks too. You're going to find this in a lot of ramp builds, Jeskai Fires, and more in standard. 
Number four is Val of Summer. This isn't uncommon from Corset 2020, going up $1.15 to $6.69. What is the deal with that? Well, this card is seeing so much play out of sideboards, and I'm not just talking standard and sees play there, but also modern and legacy. It's actually probably even better in those formats. This card has just become a sideboard staple. I don't see that changing anytime soon. This has the potential to have a relatively high price point considering it isn't uncommon from a recent set. Speak of the devil, Golos Tireless Pilgrim goes up $1.58 to $5. This is number three. And like I said, because of the standard lands decks, this card is getting extremely hot. Now, it's also a great commander card. It also sees a little vintage play. So even if it did get banned, it will hold some value. So if that does happen, or even a Field of the Dead becomes banned and they don't touch this, it could lose a lot of value in the coming weeks. So keep an eye on this one. Number two, there's the partner in crime, Field of the Dead, up $1.83 to $6.99. You kind of already heard my thoughts on this card, pretty much the same as Golos. However, this card is seeing more play outside of Standard than perhaps Golos is, because you're going to find this in a lot of modern decks right now. Titan Shift, Amulet Titan, Four Color Copycat, for example. Also, Legacy Lands is playing this, as well as Nihil Loam and Legacy. So, yeah, this has homes outside of Standard, but Standard is going to really make or break the price point of this card generally. So definitely, if there's a banning that's going to affect lands decks, this will also take a big hit. Number one is Hydroid Crisis at 523 to 29.12. This card is still amazing. It was great last season, great the season before, going to be great this season too. Yes, it is in those lands decks, and that's part of the reason the price is being driven as aggressively as it is. If something happens to those decks, then yes, this will probably stabilize, maybe come down a little bit. But still sees playing a lot of other standard decks, ramp builds, Bant Hero, and more right now. And you can imagine if those lands decks disappear, what will take their place? Probably things like ramp decks. So we'll have to kind of see what happens in the future with this card. But also this does see a little play outside of standard in Legacy and Modern. Okay, let's move on to Modern with the top five Modern legal cards that have lost value this week. Coming in at number five is Mox Amber, down 291 to 2358. Okay, tons of hype around this card recently. Emery Lurker of the Lock was coming out. Does that mean that the Paradoxical Outcome deck, or in some cases Urza Outcome, depending on whichever you want to call it, does that mean that deck is doing well now in Modern? Yeah, it's not looking too bad week one. We'll have to kind of see what happens week after week. One thing to point out, though, how many Mox Ambers does the deck run is still up in the air. I've seen some running zero. I would say the average is probably about three, though. So because of that uncertainty and also the fact that this card has been climbing pretty aggressively over the last few weeks, you are seeing a little retraction this week. Remember, though, no matter what happens in Modern, this is still going to be a good card in Commander to pull off some combos with Emery as well. Number four is Dark Confidant from Ravnica City of Guilds. It goes down 382 this week to 6887. This card has been moving up relatively aggressively recently, which was surprising me a little bit, just because I felt like with Ren and Six going into the modern format especially, and even a little bit into Legacy, that this card was seeing less play just because people had to make room for Ren and Six. But with that being said, yes, this does retract a little bit, but still seeing a lot of play in modern. You're going to find this in Jun, The Rock, Rakdos Midrange, Ops on Stoneblade, and more. In Legacy, Depths Builds, Four Color Loam, and also shows up in Vintage sometimes too. Number three, Jace the Mind Sculptor. Wow, World Wake down 322 to 134.99. Eternal Masters down 390 to 129.22. Masters 25 down 429 to 134.59. Okay, so the reason this is going down is just retraction off some recent aggressive spikes. And this is a pretty high price point for any modern era magic card. So once you start talking about the $130, $140 range for a card, it's hard to believe it's going to get that much higher, especially when this could be reprinted at any time, basically, in some kind of supplemental product. With that being said, this card did start to jump up with the unbanning of Stoneforge Mystic in Modern. As people speculated, those cards could work well together like they have in Legacy. And yeah, they kind of do. Stoneblade builds are running Jace. Your classic control decks are still running Jace too, and he's also in more places in Modern. This card can show up in Legacy Vintage Commander Oathbreaker as well, so it's always going to be very sought after but it is going to, I think, retract a little bit more before it stabilizes. Number two is Mox Opal. This is the one from Modern Masters 2015. It goes down $4.55 this week to $112. Another card that has been spiking aggressively, especially with Emery coming out. A lot of people were thinking this could be great in Paradoxical Urza. And yeah, so far, like I said, that deck looks like it's doing pretty well. But even if you took that out of the equation, this sees so much play. Urza Thopter Sword, Hardened Scales, Classic Affinity, and more in the modern format. 
Legacy, Ad Nauseam Tendrils, Bomberman, Mystic Forge Combo, and more there. Vintage Paradoxical Outcome there. All over the place, and of course Emery is just pushing this card even more. Commander players might be interested in this to play with Emery for combo purposes too. For all those reasons, the card's been hot, but this week we continue to see a retraction to maybe a more accurate price point. Also remember, the Banded Restricted List update is coming up, like I said, and people do get a little nervous about this card around that time, just because Wizards has mentioned it before as a card that is on their watch list. It is seeing a lot of modern play. I don't know if they would pull the trigger on it right now. I think they're more concerned with standard, but I've given up trying to figure out what Wizards is going to do. I never seem to be right. Number one is Stoneforge Mystic, down $5.43 to $70.07. This, of course, is from World Wake. And this was recently unbanned in modern. Because of that, it did grow very aggressively over the last few weeks. And once people started playing with it, it looked pretty good, right? Stoneblade decks were doing well. Stoneforge packages were showing up in a lot of different builds. But I will say, if you look at the Star City Games Philadelphia results from the big tournaments, not a lot of Stoneforge Mystics showed up in the high-performing decks last weekend. Now, maybe that was a fluke, but I do think because of that, combined with the fact that this was due for a little retraction anyway, that's what you're seeing here. So I would expect that this card could have a bounce-back week when it comes to performance at any given time. It's very powerful. It's not going anywhere. But maybe it does come down just a little bit more before it stabilizes. All right, on to the top five modern legal cards that have gained value this week. And this isn't a big week for the modern market. There's not a lot of actual modern staples moving up. So when you look at the top five modern legal cards that are gaining value, four of the five are actually moving because of Commander and not Modern. Maybe because of the Mystery Pack events they announced this week, which without more information is bringing about some uncertainty. Next week, I would expect to see more true modern cards on this list because there is a Star City Games Modern Open going on right now. Okay, number five is Knight Exemplar. Dual decks, Knights vs. Dragons goes up 246 to 1583. Magic 2011 goes up 267 to 1644. Now, this card has been hot, and it remains hot for Commander players building Knights decks with those Throne of Eldraine Knights, and many of them are using Sir Gwyn, Hero of Ashvale, which was in the Brawl deck, also can be found in Collector Boosters as their commander. Number four is a commander staple, Vidalcan Ori. This is the one from Fifth Dawn. It goes up 304 to 3236. Like I said, commander is just extremely hot this week. You're going to see a lot more commander cards as we go through the video. But this also did get a mention this past week in the Command Zone podcast yet again. That could have brought a little more attention to it. Number three, Cyan of Una. This is the one from Lorwyn. It goes up 321 to 995. Now this is seeing a little modern play, but really it's moving because of commander yet again. And in this case, it's a Leela Artful Provocateur that's inspiring this. Of course, another one of the Brawl Commanders. A lot of people are taking those cards, building true commander decks around them. And because of that, you're seeing a lot of bumps in cards like this. Now, I'm going to use my one per video at this point because this is going to come up a lot in this video, as you'll see later. But cards from this time period, the Lorewind, Shadowmoor block especially, there was a lull in Magic at that time. They didn't sell as many of those cards. Because of that, the print runs were a little bit lower. Now, when people go back to find some of these cards, it doesn't take a whole lot of interest to get them to spike. And that's what you're seeing here. But also, I will say this. A lot of people have been building around Alila this week. There's a lot of cards coming up, too, that are spiking because of her. Number two is Kin's Bale, Cavalier, another card from that time period, Morning Tide. Dual decks, Knights versus Dragons, goes up 276 to 862. Morning Tide goes up 321 to 999. And of course, again, this is going up because it is a knight that gives all knight creatures you control double strike. Nothing wrong with that if you're playing some Commander Knights. Number one is a Shadowmoor Rare. It is Savor the Moment, going up $15.49 to $23. And this one, wait for it, moving up not because of Commander, but because of Modern. LSV, perhaps you heard of him, he went 5-0 and on Magic the Gathering Online, playing a Fire of Inventions Taking Turns deck that ran four copies of this card. And it looks pretty sweet. Now, the deck has to prove itself in the world of Paper Modern, sure. But at least for this week, a lot of people are excited about it, and they're going out trying to pick up this card, which can be hard to find in good condition now. Okay, and to the Vintage Spotlight, this is where we talk about cards that see play in Vintage, Legacy, 93, 94, or cards that are just important to collectors. First, we have Volcanic Island. This is the one from Revised, which of course is on the reserve list, like all these dual lands. It goes up 298 this week to 496.86. I've just been tracking these Revised dual lands. They do tend to be moving up. Now, they do have their weeks where they stabilize back down. But for the most part, there does appear to be some growth. Aloran. This is on the reserve list as well. This is from Tempest. It goes up 311 to 3278. 
And this does see legacy play in allure and builds, but it's also very popular right now among commander players that are building around yet another one of these brawl commanders, Chulain Teller of Tales. Bayou, another revised dual land here on the reserve list, of course, goes up 471 to 30710. And another revised dual land also on the reserve list, Tropical Island, goes up 598 to $300.09. Next, we have Bad Moon from Unlimited up $59.11 to $80.99. Has a little bit of a spike this week. Great 93.94 card, and generally Unlimited cards have been hot recently. Mox Sapphire, of course, one of the Power Nine on the reserve list, goes up $347.50 to $2,977.49. This card and the next card we're going to look at because it is difficult to find true data on these expensive cards online. We have to kind of go by actual listings as opposed to sales sometimes. The reason this card and the next card are going up as much as they are is because there are some higher grade copies on sale this week. Time Twister is that next card, also from Unlimited, also on the reserve list. It goes up 518.46 to $4,255.95. On to the Commander Spotlight. As I mentioned earlier, Commander is having another really hot week, so let's look at these cards. Shrieking Drake. This is from Visions. It goes up a dollar or two to two seventeen. Pretty high percentage jump here. This is a card a lot of people are picking up to play in those Chulain Teller of Tales builds. Chainer Dementia Master goes up $1.13 to six sixty four. This card has been hot, partially because of Carrick Son of Yawgmoth, also partially because of Chainer Nightmare Adept, but just generally, it can be a good commander card. Braid of Fire. This goes up $1.13 to $21.14. So this is a solid commander card, but the reason it's going up this week is because of a Throne of Eldraine card. A lot of players are building commander decks around Torbran Thane of Red Fowl, and this is a card that shows up in many of those builds. Savala Heart of the Wilds is back, up $1.14 to forty three forty seven. Now, green just has an embarrassment of riches sometimes it feels like when it comes to commander. This is such a great card there. But also, there's a couple newer cards that are pushing green generally, which is maybe part of the reason this is going up this week. Cards like Castle Garenbrig, The Great Henge, and others. Another card showing up with Torbran, Thane of Red Fell. This is Citadel of Pain. It goes up $1.15 to $2.21. Tezzerat Agent of Bolas goes up $1.15 to $26.19. So there's a lot of crossover appeal right now for this card. Modern players want it for Urza Thopter Sword builds or Paradoxical Urza. Alila Artful Provocateur players, though, and Commander are trying to pick this thing up. Also, just generally, it's a good card sometimes in Commander or Oathbreaker. Because of all those reasons, it does climb this week. Exquisite Blood, very popular card in black for Commander, going up $1.22 to $27.99. Recently, it's even been more sought after because of Carrick's Son of Yawgmoth builds. Narcana Revenant, this is the one from Rise of the Eldrazi. It goes up $1.26 to $11.39 this week. And again, another very solid card if you're playing black in Commander, but has also been pushed by Carrick's Son of Yawgmoth, and now more recently, Ayara First of Loch Thwain. Dire Undercurrents, another Shadow War Rare here, goes up $1.29 to eight fifteen, and a lot of folks are putting this in their Alila Artful Provocateur builds. Polluted Bonds goes up $1.29 to twenty three seventy four. another Shadow War Rare. This one has been extremely hot recently, showing up in Yurok the Desecrated builds as well as Carrick's Son of Yawgmoth builds. Last Chance from Portal goes up $1.30 to fourteen twenty five. Now this sees a little play here and there in Commander, I see it occasionally. But I did want to point this card out because a lot of these portal cards, especially ones that do see play in Commander, they are drying up a little bit in the marketplace. This one is getting harder and harder to find in good condition. Here's another card that will play well in those Knights builds with Sir Gwyn, Hero of Ashvale. This is Balan, Wandering Knight. It goes up $1.31 to $6.31. Training Grounds up $1.32 to $23.50. This has been a popular Commander card forever. Great in Sliver decks, for example. But there's a new card pushing this one, too. Kenrith the Return King, which was the buy box promo. Also, if you watch the Star City Games Commander Versus series this week, there was a Kenrith deck playing this featured, so that could have brought more attention to it. Vampiric Tutor up $1.33 to $64.90. This is the one from 6th edition. Great vintage card, great commander card. Again, this card has been pushed a little bit recently because of Carrick's Son of Yawgmoth as well. Kozilek Butcher of Truth. This is the one from Modern Masters 2015. It goes up $1.41 to $32.38. This is in Legacy 12 post decks, but also a very popular card in those colorless commander builds. Ball Lightning from the Dark, the original one. It goes up $1.52 to $24.90. This one's being pushed by another recent card from Commander 2019, this time Greven Predator Captain. Now, this also did get a Command Zone mention this week, so that could have also brought some attention to it. 
overburdened goes up a dollar sixty to thirteen twenty four. I feel like this has been on these videos for about two months now or something like that. Shows up every week, goes up a little more this week. And yes, this one is moving because of Tulane Teller of Tales. Sword of Fire and Ice. This goes up a dollar sixty six to eighty five dollars. Okay. This is the original one from Darksteel. Granted, this one's moving more because of its interaction with Stoneforge Mystic and Modern. However, this also sees Legacy play and a lot of Commander play. It's a great Commander card. Heartseeker. Now, this one is from Darksteel. Hasn't been reprinted yet. It goes up $1.87 to $2.90. A lot of folks are putting this in their Knight Commander builds with Sir Gwyn, Hero of Ashvale. Mox Diamond from Stronghold. Now, this is on the reserve list, but it did get a reprinting in from the Vault Relics as a foil back before they closed that loophole on the reserve list. It goes up $1.91 to $270.60 this week. Not a huge climb, but I still wanted to point it out because this card has been gradually going up. This is a great vintage and commander card and also shows up in a lot of important legacy decks. Depths builds, lands, loam builds, four color control, and more. The original Mana Crypt from the book giveaway goes up $211 to $243.50. Classic vintage and commander card. And this, as well as the last card, could stand to get a little bit better with Emery, Lurker of the Lock around now. Grim Monolith on the reserve list. It goes up 260 to 161.99. Seize Legacy Play, Mystic Forge Combo, 12 posts, but it's also a fantastic commander card. Necropotence, two copies I wanted to mention this week going up. Eternal Masters up $1.84 to $18.50. Ice Age, which has really taken off. That was the slower one to move, but now this week it goes up 612 to $26. I would expect the Ice Age one to start to stabilize down a little bit. Maybe some of the others continue to go up a little more, though. This has been really sought after by people playing Carrick Son of Yawgmoth builds in Commander. See some vintage play, too. Okay, on to our Pauper Spotlight. Just one card this week, Ghostly Flicker, goes up $0.10 cents to $0.60. Cents. This is the one from Modern Masters 2017. In Pauper, you're going to find this in Tron, Sunscape Familiar builds, and more there. Onto the premium spotlight, I'll throw my disclaimer out quickly. I don't like to spend too much time talking about those rare cards or those foils that are hard to find because many times you just can't get accurate pricing online. But every week I do like to pick out a card that feels like it is moving naturally with the market. This week I chose Savor the Moment. This is the foil copy from Shadowmoor going up $30.96 this week to $55.85 for the reasons we mentioned earlier. Okay, that wraps up the Market Watch for this week. I love having you all go on this journey with me every week, so thanks for being here. As always, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page, as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.